What's up guys and welcome back to another video revisiting a topic that we've only just discussed really expensive keyboards that aim to bring pretty much every feature available to a keyboard and then they stick a very large price tag on as a result so today we're looking at the Corsair K95 Platinum their brand new keyboard that aims to be the best keyboard out there no expense spared and taking a look at it, it is fairly easy to see why this is such a desirable bit of kit. It's very well designed, it's very solid, it's only slightly bigger than the K70. It features a row of G keys along the left hand side. You've got a detachable wrist rest that can be flipped over depending on the texture that you want. And then on the underside you'll find that we have a little cross that can be used to wire any sort of USB device underneath it. So this is going to be quite useful if you say have a USB headset. You connect it to the USB pass through on the back of the keyboard and then have the cable going underneath your keyboard rather than going on top and getting in your way when you're playing games. But it's a very solid feeling keyboard that feels expensive and it should do at this price point. The aluminium chassis of the keyboard has been very well designed because I find it to be about the right size, it doesn't feel too compact and it doesn't feel overly large and it doesn't dwarf my desk either. I say this because something like the ROG Claymore, which I do really like, goes for a more compact design that does take a little bit longer to get used to, whereas I think more people will feel right at home if they use this for the first time, but it depends on your preference really whether you want something that's compact or something that's got a larger amount of spacing between the keys and is arguably easier to type on but again you can just sort of get used to either anyway. Aside from that you'll find all the media keys that we've come to expect from high-end premium keyboards with a volume roller which is very helpful for picking the right volume whether you're in game or just listening to some music from Spotify, Tidal, anything like that. You've got play pause skip buttons as well and then on the left hand side of the keyboard you've also got a button that can cycle through different brightness settings for the RGB lighting, a few different profiles that you can cycle through and the cool thing here is that now it's stored on the keyboard whereas before on the K70 it was really annoying because before you got into the Windows desktop and it loaded up the Q software you'd have to sort of use the default uh, lighting profile that was built into the K70 that's gone so now you can always use the lighting you can take this with you and it doesn't matter whether your PC has Q installed as long as it's stored on the device then it's going to be the same everywhere you go. The RGB lighting as well has been tweaked uh, versus the K70 RGB now obviously we've got uh, RGB light bar at the top of the keyboard with a Corsair logo this does help to add to a brighter, bolder RGB lighting system and I have to say that we have got to the point now where this thing really does look great. If you're a fan of RGB lighting then this is one of, if not the best keyboards out there in terms of RGB lighting. Yes, you can still set silly custom profiles that just look silly um, but you can set it up to be something that actually does look a little bit more sensible and looks great but as always the Q software is easy to use it's been going for such a long time now that it is probably the best bit of software on the market it's got a few quirks, some things um, don't hold and I did have to reinstall the software a few months ago for one of my devices but overall it is definitely one of if not the best uh, bits of software there on the market and you can do things like remap any key to do any function you want so for example I've used the G keys one is a shortcut in DaVinci Resolve to quickly group uh, different clips together one opens Tidal and then one opens the Q software itself but again you can customize this to do whatever you want it to do whether it's a macro opening a program uh, be a key be a click doesn't matter you can set all of this within the Q software but in terms of the actual typing experience and the gaming experience, is this a keyboard that's actually worth your investment? The typing experience is one of the best um, you can get for a gaming keyboard. I say that, but obviously if you're someone that prefers a clicky switch with real tactile feedback, you're not going to find that here. I find I can type quicker on this switch, but I make a lot more mistakes than on something like the Cherry MX Browns. They're also not too loud compared with a blue or a brown switch. I recorded a couple of samples and here they are.
Moving over to the gaming side of things, this keyboard doesn't let you down. It's definitely one of the best I've tested and it's become one of my new favourites. Obviously having the G switches there means that you can set additional in-game functions if you want to set up some quickfire macros or something like that. But it does come at the cost of being very close to the control and the shift keys and I found that it was actually quite easy to accidentally press one of the G keys while I was meaning to press uh, either shift or control. Let me reiterate as well that this is the UK version of the keyboard. I normally get a lot of people asking why the shift key is so small. That's just how we Brits have it. You Americans have a different style of keyboard. But if you do want to buy this plainly for the gaming performance, then yes, it's not going to let you down. Having a mechanical keyboard is a big help, and I find that it's more natural and it's easier to use for a longer period of time, whereas membrane keyboards do just feel a little bit mushy and you sort of do feel that you've got more control over what's going on, even though we probably don't. Having said that, if you want to get a more budget-friendly mechanical keyboard that is going to perform very similarly in-game, because this isn't going to suddenly uh, turn you into a magic Counter-Strike GO player, then consider looking at something for around about £80. I mean, the K65 is a 10 keyless keyboard, but that's going to feel very similar in terms of raw gaming performance to a keyboard like this. So if you just want gaming performance, then you don't need to spend this much money. But there are a few other neat features as well about the K95, other than the fact that the RGB lighting actually looks pretty damn awesome. You can sync it up to other Q peripherals as well, and because Corsair have got such a large amount of them, it's very easy to get a nice set together. So for my testing, I use the K95 Platinum with a M65 Pro, and then the Corsair Polaris MMO mouse mat as well. If you want to see reviews of either of those, by the way, I'll leave them in the eye in the top right hand corner. And you can sync them up with some cool lighting effects. But in practice, I just leave them on a sort of color shift between them for a natural but a cool looking look. And that pretty much covers my review of the K95 Platinum. There's not really that much to dislike about it other than two things. First one being that the uh, staging of the keyboard. So you've got two levels, you've either got flat or you can raise it up a little bit. But here the legs actually go along the keyboard, which means that if you move the keyboard a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, then one of the legs falls down. And this happened a lot and it was really stupid. Why couldn't they have it the traditional way whereby it goes forward? So if you push the keyboard forward, it would fall over, um, but not left and right. But maybe that's just something that will affect me. And then the other one, of course, is the price, which is not ridiculous. I mean, I would say it's fair in terms of um, what they're asking for, for what the competition has on offer. But I wouldn't recommend that people go out and buy this unless they're really dead set on having all of these features because you do not need to spend this much money on a keyboard to get great in-game performance. Only buy this keyboard if you want something that looks as good as it does. You want the fully customizable RGB lighting, you want the G keys, and you just pretty much want the solid build and construction of the K95. But overall, this does win the Top Performer Award because it's not necessarily great value for money, but it is a great keyboard and it's going to be a keyboard that I will enjoy using hopefully for a long period to come. A massive thank you to Corsair as always for sponsoring the channel though and for shipping out this review unit. As always, all opinions are my own. There's been no direction here. Um, thanks to you guys for checking out this video. Leave a comment. Let me know, do, does keyboards like these, are they worth buying? Are they ridiculous? I don't know, interested to hear what you have to think. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, then do subscribe for more videos. Hit the like button if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh no, and do you prefer this uh, sort of head-on style of video as well, or do you prefer the old style of the camera over there? Let me know. The aluminium chassis, chassis, three, two, one. The aluminium, the aluminium chassis, I can't say the word chassis. The alu, the alu, the alumin, the aluminium chassis. Uh, if you're American, you just say aluminum chassis. No, I can't even say that. Aluminium chassis. Aluminum chassis.